Hey guys, it's your boy D Valo back with some more boxing. Chris Eubanks Jr. Will, is against Arthur Abraham July the 15th on ITV box office. This fight will happen at the Wembley Arena. Chris Eubanks Jr. describes this fight as the one to silence the hater. Arthur Abraham used to be a champion. He's got 46 wins, 6 losses. He's a quality opponent. And we're in a head-to-head when asked about his game plan. He says, I have a tactic. This is one tactic and I'm going to use this to win. When Chris Eubanks was asked about how you're going to um, win this, he says, this guy's a one-dimensional fighter. And I'm not a one not a one dimensional fighter can't beat me. So um I'm gonna beat him. And uh, when asked about stopping him, he says I don't go into a fight thinking this, this and that. I think of, you know, winning and doing what I need to do to 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 become a, a champion. So he's looking to stop him. So my prediction is I think I, I think he would beat him. I think he's gonna break this guy's face in with uppercuts. Stoppage round eight. There is a, some weight issue though, not a, a weight issue. This guy is a super middleweight, and Chris Ubex Jr. has said that he is an actual middleweight. So, but he's feds because he's fighting, he wants the best fights to progress his career. He's decided to fight at super middleweight. I don't think there's any problems with his weight because he, uh, he's someone that would train in the gym like every day. Have you seen this guy training in the gym? Literally, if you go check out on um, YouTube and videos, I know someone that I went to his gym and saw him. Like everything you see on the videos, you know when he's punching, that, doing those uppercuts on that machine, and it's like, it's like a it's like a machine gun on that. This is the way this guy trains. I so I think any kind of weight he's at is due to his training. Chris Eubank Senior says he's done a good job in him, and uh, now he's ready to become a champion. But Chris Eubank Senior does a lot of talking. If you seen that video on IFL. He does a lot of talking and, and articulates his words very carefully and has all these silences. And he's talking about the warrior code. <laughs> the warrior code. I'm going to get into that. If Have you guys seen that video on IFL with Chris Eubank Senior talking about his son? Have you seen it? If you haven't, go check it out. And in that video, it's quite interesting. If you have watched it, you'll know what I mean when I'm talking about the warrior code. What, what do you guys think the warrior code is? And, and how do you see it? Because the way he sees it is that uh, it's when you're in that ring, it's not a sport. It's you're putting your life on the line. You're a warrior. And um, whatever happens, you should, if you lose, you should take your beating. At least you come out as a champion. And if you win, you should win with integrity and, you know, and be honourable. When he's talking about if you lose... Uh, he also talking about quitting. You don't get much respect. He's referring to Kell Brook and his distaste, his distaste <laughs> to how Kell Brook quit that fight. So this this is slightly off topic, but it connects to the Warrior Code and um, that video. So it, it's it's kind of relatable. But w- what do you think about the the Kell Brook situation and him quitting? Because he did take a knee in that fight and. Didn't, he took the count basically. He he probably could have got up, but he thought to himself, you know what, enough is enough now, and I'm not getting up. So what is your decision of that fight, Chris? According to Chris Eubanks, he's he's disgraced himself because he's not. That's not what fighters do. You should take your beat and whatever happens. One the one part of which I I think is a bit crazy what he's saying because at the end of the day. Really, it's, it's, it's easy to say these opinions when you're not in that situation. He's been in a situation where he says he's taking beatings, but, you know, everyone's different. If, if he's a quitter, he's a quitter, isn't it? If he, not everyone can be an honourable integrity, all these kind of things that he says. And, and who say, who's to say that that is the correct way anyway? Although there is a way, there is there is a certain truth in the fact that if you're a quitter, people don't respect you. And it's also, but I also think people look at how you quit and what situation it is. And you know what, to be honest, some people out there are just really fickle. And everyone has their opinion, but I think some people 
were really fanboys of Kel Brook before and then they've just changed their tune immediately. Now that after he's quit, they're like, oh, Kel Brook is a quitter. You know, I used to like him, but this guy's actually shit and all this kind of thing. It's like, come on, you was loving this guy of saying that he's going to beat Errol Spence and all this and and, how, and and then supporting him and then you turn against him. I don't understand people like that. I, um, I, You know what, I, I'm not biased either. So if you... If you have your opinion about Kel Brook and you say, oh, you know what, this guy's shit. Uh, you said that before, then when he fought Errol Spence, you said, yeah, you've, you've even thought that he was going to lose and then he lost. Then, all right, cool. But it's when you change the tune, which I don't really get. Do you know someone like that? You change their tune straight after he, he's fought in his fight. And what is your actual opinion on Kel Brook and quitting and the warrior code? Do you think he's less of a fighter and less of a man because he quit? And what is your opinion? Because I know that I think it's part of human nature to to and as a boxing fan watching these things, humans like to see another human in pain. We like to see violence and destruction. It seems quite dark, but back in the day, people used to go watch public executions. They used to be chanting when someone's getting stoned to death or burnt alive. Or when they used to believe in witches, they used to like tie them to a stone and drown them in the water and just like watch watch all this thing happen. Look at Guy Fawkes Night. People were like, that guy was burnt to a stake. Even even to these days, I remember as a kid going to Guy Fawkes Night and seeing like this. Um, it wasn't an actual person, but a representation of someone getting burnt on a stake. And we're celebrating it with fireworks. And I'm like, now what I'm actually thinking about, I'm like, right, that's kind of like representing somebody getting killed and we're there just watching it. So I think it's part of human nature to in, in, enjoy these kind of things. So maybe parts of are part of you when you're seeing him getting destroyed by old Spence, your excitement level is going up and you're thinking, oh, you want to see the knockout because you, you know it's coming and you want to see the knockout so until then when he quits it's a bit of a downer like oh what the fuck I wanted to see like the finish of this and he's quit like oh what a quitter and then in that situation though it's different what do you think because I think that yeah he quit but the way he quit is because of his eye in it he couldn't see and if I couldn't see in the ring how am I supposed to fight? Like even if I'm losing, like I'm just taking a, I'll be taking a beating. It was the eleventh round. You could say maybe look, hang on to the twelfth. But these people, these fighters are getting paid a lot of money to do this. And I think if you was a quitter, why would you even take the fight? This is what I think. If you were, if you, if you knew that, if you knew deep down that you're in danger, why would you take the fight? And if you were, if you was a quitter, why would you even become a fighter? Because this is a very hard sport. This is a very hard thing to do. It's not a joke. It's not a game when you're going in there. It's a hard thing to do. There's loads of other jobs and occupations you could choose which are very profitable as well. Why would you choose to become a fighter if you if you had a quitting mentality? It just doesn't make sense to me. But everyone's gonna have their opinion. Drop it in the comments. What do you think of the of of Kel Brook quitting? And what is your view on the Warrior Code? Now, Chris Eubanks Senior, as he goes, he, he talks a whole load of things, and then he 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 brings it back to his son, and says, "Well, like, I've done a great." job on this guy now I'm going to take a seat back he's a champion and every other champion is running from him what he fails to talk about is the fact that there's loads of politics involved either as glorious as it seems when you're in the ring and all that kind of thing the reality of it is that fighters have got obligations if they're already a champion they've got defenses for example um, James Aguil, he's injured at the moment, he's just had a shoulder shoulder, sur shoulder surgery, he's not going to be in the ring for a while, when he's back though, he has to fight either Andre Durrell or Usa Cat guy. The fight, Andre Durrell have had a recent fight with that guy, and uh, that fight, he won that by default because it was stopped, the other guy was disqualified for a low shot. Then Andre Durrell's trainer sucker punched um, Usa Cat guy, then now... That guy's getting 
they're taking that guy to court and they're also appealing the decision to, of this disqualification. So who knows? There could be a rematch between Andre Durrell and that guy. That gives James Aguil more time where he can decide what to do, but he still has to fight him, either of those two. So there's no chance of Jagiel fighting. I can't see Jagiel fighting Chris Eubanks Jr. this summer or even late or by the end of this year. Also, there's James Aguil Groves. I'm not sure about that either. And, you know, Chris Eubanks Jr., he can't even fight. There's also Billy Joe Saunders, but he can't fight him either because he's got a fight. He's tied up with Vantor Kurtzeis. He's, he's fighting him. It would be good if he could avenge that loss. So anyway, there's a load of things going on there. Chris Eubanks Sr. fails to, to really talk about that because he's talking about his son. And, and it's, the way he describes it is like, you know, you know that there was... Back in the war days, when it was like World War Two, World War One, when they were trying to recruit people to to go, and it says your country needs you. And that thing, it was like, oh, was it more of it? Was like the Hitler? It was like Hitler's face, and he's got like a, a point, point in hand towards you, and he's like, your country needs you, sort of thing. That kind of thing, saying that. Oh, making it seem like such an honourable thing, but really and truly, you're going in there to get your face battered in. And Kukin said something interesting. He said, could you possibly see your your son in that situation? And and then Senior just goes, Chris, you at Senior goes and talks about some next story. I wasn't really following it from there because he, 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 he picks what he says to you. It's not, it's like you're asking him a question, but he's telling you something. And if you try and, ask him something he will find a way to to just talk about his point you know what i mean so uh, for the entertainment value he's a funny guy to watch but i don't really agree with certain things that he's saying what do you think do you do do you agree with the warrior his version of the warrior code and what is your opinion anyway i think um he should win this fight and then fight another champion but who knows this is a big test for him because uh, chris eubanks jr has fought Guys, which he's been able to beat relatively easily. That's why he's been been showing off so much. Whereas this guy is a quality opponent who's not just going to be a pushover. Like when I know when I heard about that fight against Riddle Quinlan, I thought, who, who the fuck's Quinlan? And then Quinlan actually survived. Like Quinlan took a lot of punishment before that fight was stopped, and it's because he was a big guy. So now this Arthur Abraham is a bigger than Reynold Quinlan. And it's at a super middleweight division, so, and he's he's not just going to be sitting there. So even though Junior says that he's, Mister Eubank says that he's a one-dimensional fighter, and he can't beat me. How will he dispose of this guy, and um, what will this guy offer in it? So it'll be an interesting fight to watch. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens on July the fifteenth. Anyway, it's your boy D Valo. Um, make sure, thank you for watching. And I appreciate you guys' comments and any any way that I can improve this channel, just uh, give me some advice and I'll be happy to to see what I can do anyway. Thank you for listening. As I said before, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's your boy D Valo and I'm out.